With the sun shining in through the windows right now, this might either be a great time to record or a horrible time. Kind of leaning toward horrible. Anyway, that's not the point of this video, which is rather hands. I was reminded of this just recently when I got a hit on the pinky finger in sparring while wearing gloves, actually. Red Dragon gloves, which by the way, are kind of horrible in terms of protection. You know, they, they give you mobility and everything, but the fingertips are completely unprotected. I would generally not recommend doing actual sparring with these, especially not with long swords. The funny thing is, we were sparring with side swords, and so you'd think, well, there's hand protection, and also we were doing light sparring, and uh, my training partner is good at controlling his hits. And this brings up an interesting point about the most vulnerable target that people often don't think of. That's the hands. Even with something like this, and that's a point that I really need to state because it's something that I used to talk about with regards to katanas. In this case, it's an odachi, but uh, either way, you've got a fairly small guard on this, just this little disc here. And I used to argue that this is not great, you want some more hand protection, so if you compare this to this long sword here has a particularly long cross guard. So the idea is an opponent trying to snipe the hand could land a cut like this past the guard in this case, but not here. There's a lot more protection. So you'd have to go basically dip under the guard or come in at a different angle. So in theory, this provides more protection. However, in practical terms, at this point, I've done enough sparring to see a lot of hand hits. They're just, they're out there. They're vulnerable. Anytime you deliver a cut or a thrust for that matter, anytime the blade is forward, basically doing anything, your hands are further away from your body. So your hands become a target when your body is not. Even if you try to minimize the exposure, even if you really try to lead with the blade, it's right here. You close off certain angles of attack, but there are always some. Like, for example, if somebody tries to cut at this angle here, I can turn it so that the guard catches it. But the moment I turn it, I open this up. I close one line of attack and I open up another. So right here, you have quite an elaborate guard you have a ring here, you have bars curving around there, you've got the guard there. So there's a lot going on here. And uh, this ring, of course, protects the finger that you put over the guard. So this finger is generally pretty safe. Basically the only thing that could catch this finger would be a thrust right there. But even so, just these fingers here are still exposed. Anything other than a fully enclosed basket hilt, basically, will leave the, the hands, the, the fingers exposed to some extent. Even if you have a knuckle guard going all the way down here, that does a lot to protect the hand. But somebody could still land a cut on this side, or on that side, low, or on the wrist, for that matter. I can't defend against that, of course, but it's still vulnerable. Just to clarify, I'm not arguing against the fact that certain sword guards are more protective than others. Some designs will prevent hits that a different type of sword would leave you exposed to. For example, the nagel or nail guard on the messer can catch hits at angles that would otherwise go through. The same is true for rings or disc guards. I just want to point out that we shouldn't overstate the disadvantage of a smaller guard. The difference between a basket hilt and a knuckle bow is more significant than that between a cross guard and a discard, for example. And this is where a buckler makes a huge difference. Uh, it's of course, not designed to be used with this kind of sword because you've got the, the bars protruding there. But this, this closes off that line. So if I cut, I cut with the buckler in place, 
it closes off this entire line of attack. That's of course even more true with a full-size shield. So this is a small guard. So does it leave the hands exposed? Of course it does. But if you think about it, that's the case with just about any sword used with two hands. They are always going to be somewhat exposed. In fact, with a single-handed sword as well, unless you have a basket hilt or something similar that provides this level of hand protection. Uh, if you're fighting with uh, mitten gauntlets, of course, not an issue. You can take all kinds of hits on those. With fingered gauntlets, less so. They don't protect as well as the mitten style. So there are, of course, certain guards that deny the opponent access to your limbs. You know, any, any time you're in a retracted guard, in whatever form it may be, your hands are out of the way. And in fact, sometimes in the middle of a fight, if you see somebody going for your hands, the best thing may be to just retract it, hope that they overcommit, and then you come down and punish them for it. Here's something else to consider that makes hits on an unarmored hand even more devastating. If you think about holding out your hand and getting struck in a finger with a sword, that's bad, of course, nobody wants that. But at least there's some give. You know, the moment they're hit, you know, they're not pinned. On a sword hilt, on the other hand, the grip, they are pinned. So in this case, the finger is, is being basically crushed between the blade and the grip. It has nowhere to go. So if you think of putting something on a chopping block and cutting it, it's way easier than if it's kind of freely suspended and has somewhere to go. So that makes even light cuts pretty devastating, which is the case here. You know? Wearing gloves and having a nice controlled cut, not full force by any means, he deliberately pulled it to be safe, with the side sword that does not have a particularly massive blade, yeah, even this can cause an injury. Not a major one by any means, but that's with a blunt one with deliberately light contact. So imagine this happening with a sharp sword with the intent to do damage with a certain amount of force. That finger is gone. And it's a very safe, easy target for the opponent. Because if you're attacking, your hand protrudes so much further than your body. So all the opponent does, especially if you target the opponent's torso or head, in other words, a deep target, it's all the way back here, and they step back just enough to evade that, your arm is within easy reach. So they can step back and cut to the hand or arm. Not as dramatic or heroic or what have you, but very effective. So something to keep in mind. Anyway, hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Keep your fingers safe. Thank you.